That gospel reading is filled with hope. Hope that bubbles up and encourages us to share it. Now it may be hard to see that hope on the surface of the story, but it's there. Let's dive in, because when we find that hope, I have a project that you and I can do that will grab hold of that hope and share it in a special way. So we have to start with something that I've said before. When Jesus talks about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, he's usually not talking about the afterlife, but rather about God's kingdom here in this world. This is the Jesus who began his ministry by proclaiming, the kingdom of God has come near. He's talking about what it means to live in God's kingdom here and now. Just like we pray in the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So last week we talked about how Christ comes again throughout our life, through people. And the parable Jesus tells us today is this. Jesus tells us something about how we experience the kingdom here and now. So what does he tell us? A wealthy man gives three of his servants enormous sums of money, a currency called talents. He entrusts his money with them to use while he is away. Two of those servants use their talents well. And what's the result? There is great rejoicing, and they're given even more talents to use. But the third, the third hides their talent away. They didn't use it at all. And what was the result? Condemnation, scolding, and even what they had was taken away. This story is about us. God has given each of us talents as well, perhaps not enormous sums of money, but gifts and skills and passions. God has entrusted all of us with these talents and told us to use them. And when we use them well, when we put our God-given gifts to use, when we use God's gifts and make a difference with them, what is the result? Doesn't it feel good? Doesn't it give you a sense of joy and satisfaction? Doesn't it give you a feeling that God will entrust you with more? Just like in the parable. And when we don't, when we are like the third servant, we hide our talents, our gifts away. Why do we do that sometimes? Now, there could be many reasons. Perhaps we're scared. Perhaps we don't think we have anything to offer. Perhaps we feel alone. Perhaps we're hurt or suffering in some way. That's how the third servant was feeling. And what is the result? We feel worthless. We have nothing. We feel even more alone, maybe even like we've been thrown into the outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. I think we experience both of these things in our lives. In those times when we are using our God-given gifts to the fullest, we often find life to be filled with hope, even when things are hard. But in those times when we can't or don't use those gifts, we often feel like life is hopeless. And that might not feel fair, because it's usually not our fault if we're suffering, scared, or alone. But praise be to God, here's where the hope, the good news comes in. And here's where our project comes in too. The good news is that you are never alone. Christ is with you in your suffering, even if you are unable to use your gifts right now. And what's more, Christ can turn that suffering itself into a gift, which you'll be able to use later. Now, I am not saying that God causes your suffering. I'm saying that God can transform your suffering into something good, something holy, something that becomes itself a gift that you can share with other people. Maybe not immediately, maybe not easily, but the God who raised Jesus from the dead can and will transform your suffering too. So I have a project in mind that I'm calling Sharing Our Hope. Sharing Our Hope will be a booklet with a bunch of different types of suffering listed in it. And next to each type of suffering will be a name and a phone number of a person you can talk to if you're going through that. A person who knows that particular suffering themselves and is willing to talk with you and offer you hope. Because when we're suffering, there is something very comforting and powerful about talking with someone who has also been there or been somewhere similar. This is why support groups can help so much. 
There is a feeling of being seen, of being heard, a feeling of not being alone. And the amazing thing is that the one who is helping also feels a comforting and powerful feeling. Both people find a sense of being less alone, more alive, more hopeful. I know this very well because I have been on both sides of that. So the Sharing Our Hope booklet will be very simple. It will be a list of sentences like this. If you are struggling with such and such, you can talk to so and so. For instance, if you are struggling with mental illness, you can talk to Pastor Schultes. My name will be there next to mental illness because I know what it is to have mental illness and I am comfortable talking about it with others. I talked about sharing our hope at our congregation council meeting last week and several council members committed that night to being listed in this booklet. One said he'd be comfortable with his name next to if you are going through a joint replacement you can talk to. One said I could put her name next to if you have gone through a natural disaster you can talk to. And I have names to put beside if you're struggling with surgical unknowns and if you're dealing with the death of an animal. That's a great start. And I can picture sharing our hope, listing someone to talk to if a spouse dies. Or someone to talk to if your parent is developing dementia. Or if you're going through a divorce. Or any number of things that we go through in our lives. Now the people I'm going to list in this booklet aren't trained experts. They're members of Prince of Peace, people like you and me. For instance, I'm not a trained or licensed psychologist, and I don't pretend to be one. I can't offer what they do. But here's what I can offer. I got a phone call just a few days ago from a clergy colleague of mine who knows about my own experience with depression. Well, this colleague called me to ask about a particular type of mental health care called a partial hospitalization program because they were wondering if it might help them. I participated in such a program just a few years ago and I was able to listen to this colleague and offer my own experience so they could figure out where to go next. I didn't offer a solution, I didn't have one, but I offered a listening ear and my own experience and a clear sign to my colleague that they are not alone. Perhaps you can offer that to someone too. So here's what I would like to do. Next week, I will invite you to sign up to be listed in the Sharing Our Hope booklet. Next week I'll have slips of paper available for you to provide your name, phone number, and what particular struggle or struggles you would be comfortable talking to people about. And then after a few weeks of collecting those slips, I'll put them all together into the booklet, which I'll make available out on the Narthex counter and via email. It will be there for anyone to look at, to take home with them. It will be an invitation for people to talk to you if they need a listening ear who understands. And I want to make clear that I'm not expecting anyone in particular to participate in this. I believe we've all gone through hard times, but that doesn't mean we're all comfortable talking about them. And that's fine. It's absolutely okay if you choose not to be listed in this booklet. It's absolutely okay if your thought right now is, I just want to read the booklet so I can reach out to someone. I also want to make clear that you are always, always welcome to talk to me or to our pastoral assistant Larry about any issue in your life. Whatever you are struggling with, we can offer a spiritual, scriptural perspective and we can pray with you. The Sharing Our Hope booklet is not to replace that, but to be in addition to that. And going forward, Larry and I may even use the Sharing Our Hope booklet to recommend someone in the congregation whom you might want to contact as well. So I'd like you this week to prayerfully think about whether you'd like to be listed in Sharing Our Hope. I'll be talking about this over the next few weeks, but there's no pressure. Next week you'll have the opportunity to sign up if you like. My hope is to have the booklet ready in time for our Blue Christmas service on December 17th. That's a day when people come here looking for hope amid their own suffering, and I think that would be a good day to have this booklet available. And please know, I just plan to make the booklet available. I don't know how often it will be used. If you're listed in it, I don't know if you'll get a dozen phone calls or none at all. I just don't know. But I believe that making it available is a good thing. I think it will provide an additional opportunity for us to share the hope that we've received. 
I believe that the conversations that come from this will enable us to feel the joy of being part of God's kingdom. They'll enable us to feel less alone. They'll enable us to share with one another one of the most precious gifts that God has given to any of us. Hope. Amen. Amen.